God, and we just give you all praise and we give you all glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Somebody give God some praise in this house tonight. Amen. Well, praise God. I mean, you be excited about 2014. I'm very excited about it, praise God, because I'm going to keep moving forward in the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm going to keep going on. I've had enough of the back. I've had enough of the past. Hallelujah. I'm turning my sights on the Lord, and I'm going forward, praise God. Did you know that you have a helper in this life? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated if you can. Praise the Lord, if you feel like it. <laughs> praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to minister to you for, uh, for just a few minutes, and we're going to come back and sing some more and worship God and praise the Lord and, and just thank Him for this new year. And uh, what I want to speak to you about tonight, just for a few minutes, is the power that we have in the Lord. We have a helper. A lot of people go about this life, you know, and, and they're just... They don't know this or they never access the power of the Holy Ghost. They never access that in their life. And we get down a lot of times in this life and things happen and we don't really realize that we have a blessed helper in this life. Praise God. Hallelujah. That points us to Christ and His ways. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for that tonight? Praise God. Father, I pray, God, as I minister this word, God, that you've given me that you'll touch us, God, tonight. Impute your word into our heart and life and let us walk out of here transformed by your spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Let me ask you a few questions. Do you ever, do you ever have a problem that seems like it, would, it will never be resolved? How many of you ever had that, had that problem? Many times. And, and where do you turn for advice? Or comfort when feeling discouraged about the issue? Do you think advice from the scriptures can correct the personal problems that prevent us or prevent you from finding the resolution? I think the answer is yes. Definitely the yes. Hallelujah. Because in the word is life. Hallelujah. And it will bring life. As the Spirit pours into your spirit. Praise God. We were getting ready to travel to Michigan back in July and, and, and into Ohio and, and a lot of different places God was leading us. And God sp he kept speaking to me a word that I was like, what are you talking about? I mean, I know what the word means, but he kept saying, resolve. Resolve. And of course, I, I thought of the great grand old song, I am resolved. And, you know, and I, I began to sing that and praise the Lord. But you know what? He kept speaking in my ear and in my spirit, resolve. There's a lot of people tonight that has no resolve. They're walking without any resolve in their life. Hallelujah. That resolve that they need is, of course, to be saved, come to the cross and let their sins be forgiven, but then to receive the Holy Ghost. He is the resolve that we need in this life. Praise the Lord. I got to Ohio. I got to Iowa. We were going to Michigan and Ohio and all over and back to Missouri and Illinois. And we was in Clinton, Illinois and different places and Indianapolis. And I, while I was in Iowa, we were doing a revival. We were supposed to go home. But I knew it was God because God said, you're going to go to Iowa. And, and this pastor I know there is going to call you and be ready. And I said, okay. He called as we got over toward Missouri over toward Kansas City, he called and said, Brother, I feel like we ought to go into revival. Can you come? And I said, Yes, sir, we can. We're ready. 
we were going to go home, but that doesn't mean anything. We want to just come and have revival. I feel like God is going to do some awesome things in the revival. Praise the Lord. And he did. But one of the things he did as I was praying, I kept thinking about this, this thing resolve, you know, and I kept going on that on and on and on in my mind and in my spirit. And as I got to praying about the services, I got on my face before the Lord. I just kind of obey him, whatever he wants me to do. I feel in my spirit, sometimes I'll get down on my knees. Sometimes I'll get on my face. Sometimes I'll get up and walk around. I can't hardly be still. If you haven't noticed that already, I got to move around. I feel the presence when I get out and move around. Praise God. But you know what? It doesn't matter how you do it as long as you do what God says to do. He wants a church that is obedient to him. He wants people that are obedient to him and will not in any case back down from what he wants to do. And I got there that night and I was, I was praying that afternoon actually. And God said, I was praying about the resolve issue. You know, the resolve was going on in my mind. And he said, this one word came to mind. Resolutionist. And I thought, Lord, what is that? Well, that intrigued me. So after I felt the Spirit begin to move in me and I was able to get up and, and begin to look that word up, I found out that it has a lot of meanings. It has a lot of meanings, a lot of things that are in the dictionary about the word resolutionist. And it describes people that are like people tonight that are making New Year's resolutions. They're making New Year's resolutions to do this or do that. But more than likely, probably 95% won't keep the resolution. Because they will fall by the wayside. Just like I looked up the word in it and it said uh, that... People that make resolutions. People that go to the gym in January looking to get rid of all oh, that Christmas turkey and Thanksgiving. I think I ate more at Thanksgiving than I did at Christmas. I don't know. I know I ate a whole lot more sweets at Thanksgiving. But you know what? They go to the gym and they're looking for, for some solace to get rid of this thing. They want to try to, to find a way to, to get rid of the weight. Only to find out in February that it's not worth going on. I can't make it. You know, they're on the treadmill and they're, you know, doing this number and falling by the wayside. And they find out, I don't have the tenacity to do this anymore. That's one of the meanings of the word. Hallelujah. And I found several meanings to that word. But you know what? The world don't want you to know what God spoke to me in my spirit that that word means. Now you can make a resolution tonight and I think that's wonderful. If you feel God wanting you to do that, then you do it. But the fact is, I've got to have the resolutionist in my life. Praise God. And I have him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I looked up the word. I found it in Wikipedia. A little bitty thing way over there, you know, and the world don't want you to know what it means. They have no, they, you can't find it. It's hard to find. A lot of dictionaries say, no, it's not there, or it just hasn't been, you know, hasn't been, uh, just, uh, you know, defined yet. But I looked over in Wikipedia is the name of that little place. And I found out that the word resolutionist is a noun, which is a person. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know what it said? It said that he, this person, is a problem solver, not a problem creator. Hallelujah. He will solve problems in your life. Thank you, Jesus. And if you need anything tonight, it's the Holy Ghost in your life because he is the one that will resolve issues that will come your way in this life. He takes care of things that the enemy throws in your path. If you'll put your mind at ease and put it on him and begin to worship him and glorify God through all of it, he'll step in and he'll take control. Case in point, I'll prove it to you. 
One more little instance I found in the dictionary. It said an instance of resolving. If you have a problem here tonight, it takes him an instance to resolve it. If you'll turn it over to him, he will resolve the issue. The people in this life, in this world today need the resolution as they say go into this new year. Because I believe that we're going to need the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to go another step without it. Just like Moses said, if you're not going to be there, I don't want to go. And that's what I'm going to do. Hallelujah. I'm going to move into this new year praising God and glorifying His holy name. I saw the resolution has changed my dad from a chronic griper. You know, because he was fought by the devil. And he blamed God for a mother's death. And he, you know, he blamed, you know, this and that on different situations. But do you know when he got filled with the Holy Ghost, there was not one word of negativity that come out of him anymore. Hallelujah. It was resolved. You ask my wife. We heard him at night in there before he died. He was in there praying in, the t in tongues. Hallelujah. And from that moment on, he was changed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's look at uh, Romans 8, 26. I got one scripture for you just real quick. There's a lot of scriptures that we could look at. Romans 8 and 26. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I've got to have him. I've got to keep going in him. Praise God. I want to be stronger. I want to turn up the heat on the devil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The scripture says, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Infirmities, I looked up and it says frailty or weaknesses. Did you know that every one of you are weak in some way or another? So therefore, we've got to have this helper that can help us in our weaknesses. Praise God. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself. Did it say us? No. It said the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now I like the word control. Do you know the Holy Ghost wants to get out of control in your life? He wants to get out of control in our services, out of in our worship, in this world. He wants to bless and touch people's lives and point them to the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you look at the relationship of the Holy Spirit to Jesus for a moment in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is related to Christ in His number one, His conception. He resolved the issue of a virgin birth. Hallelujah. He resolved that issue. Number two, the baptism. Hallelujah. When Jesus was baptized in the water by John, he was there, the Son of God. The voice out of heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Also, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost descended on him Proving and resolving the issue of the Trinity. Number three, he, in his walk in service in Luke 14, 1 through 14, we find out that Jesus was, he had humility and he taught us to walk in humility. And the Spirit of God wants you to walk in that humility. Have you ever known anybody that the, the Spirit of God was moving on that was full of pride? Number four. I like this one the most. Praise God. In the resurrection of Jesus, he resolved the issue that the dead will be raised from the grave. Hallelujah. And when we die and Jesus comes back, the power of God, hallelujah, is going to resurrect us. Thank you, Jesus. He, he resolved that issue. And number five, in his witness throughout this age, you know that he is witnessing the power of Jesus Christ to this entire world. Hallelujah. He's at work. We're not talking about some kind of pretty story that once was. We're talking about a God that is alive today and moving and flowing. Hallelujah. Too many people don't know that. They're, they're darkened to that. 
And it concerns me that we've got to have the presence of the Holy Ghost ministering to our lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, case in point. We were traveling across the, the country this year, and we went across to Illinois from Ohio and then uh, back to Indianapolis and then back to Ohio and, and then all the way over to, to KC. I don't know how we got to come across that kind of booking, but I did it. I know it was me. But you know what? We got to St. Louis, and we were there, and, and we had the bus, and, you know, we were traveling, and, and we stayed the night at a, at a lake there in St. Louis and uh, spent the night getting up the next day. The pastor of the church said, you don't have to be here till 7 o'clock because we're having a wedding and you don't want to be here for that, so come on about 7 o'clock. And so we say, okay, that sounds great. We'll get there and we'll be ready. Well, that next morning, you know, we, we were staying there at the lake and everything, and the next morning I got up. We got up about 10-ish mm, or so, you know. We didn't get up real early. We was tired from driving. I was. We got up, and I said, we got to get out of here at noon. That gives us plenty of time. I want to get over there, and if we get over there to Kansas City, We'll look around and we'll do whatever we need to do, but we're going to be early because I want to make a good impression on this guy. We got up and got out of there just like we said at noon. We headed out and went over to Flying J. Thank you. A Flying J just outside of St. Louis where we was at. We pulled up there and we pulled into the RV area. I like to go into the RV side because you can get diesel and, and uh, gasoline for the generator. We pulled up there, and Parker says, Daddy, we got a flat. And I said, okay. All right. I said, you know what? I said a good thing. I said, God will take care of it. But you know what? I spoke that, but really I was thinking, oh, my goodness. Here we are, and it's noon. And we don't have anybody that can fix a tire at noon on a Saturday. They're all gone. They want to spend their weekend fishing or doing whatever else they do. So you know where we had to go? Walmart. Well, you know how Walmart is. It's two hours. They say, okay, we'll get you a tire, but it's going to be a couple of hour wait, you know, and, and we'll get you through as quick as you can. But, you know, it's two hours. So we took the bus around, parked it, took the trailer off, took the tire off, put the, bu the tire in the bus, went to the next exit, stopped at Walmart, went in there. You know what? I, I spoke what was going to happen, but I wasn't believing it. But God was moving anyway because we spoke it. I had said it, but I didn't believe it. I, you know, I, I was thinking there was doubt building, billowing up in my mind. You know, we're not going to make it. You know, the enemy will hit you at your weakest point and he will begin to talk to you, you're not going to make it. And that's what was happening. But what I spoke, I said, we, you know, God's going to take care of it. That's what I told him. We went down there to Walmart. I walked in. I told him I have a tire. Now, we got down there at Walmart. There wasn't anybody around. Nobody there except the people that was working. How many times have you ever been to Walmart tire shop and there ain't nobody around? The people, people are usually stacked up in there. God was working it out. They said, okay, we'll get the tire. We'll fix it for you. They called me within about 30 minutes. Maybe 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, and said, Brother, uh, Mr. Douglas, your tire is fixed. And I said, okay. So I went out there, got the tire, went back down, put it on the trailer, put the trailer on the bus, was ready to go, but we reached in and felt the other tire, and it had wire on it, showing wire. Holy Spirit said, get back down to Walmart. You go back down to Walmart and get that one taken care of. So we did. Went down there. You know, I was growling. I was mad. I wanted to get on to where we had to go. I, want to go. I don't want to go back to Walmart. We went back down there. You know what? That, that manager, that tire place said, where is that tire at? We'll, we'll come out there and get it off for you and bring it in. Holy Spirit at work. But me in conflict with him. I was in conflict with him because I told him, I said, no. I said, my boys, is, they'll get out there and they'll get that off. 
God was taking care of it for me, but I couldn't see it that way. I had to see it my way. We took the tire off. It didn't take them long. But the thing is, when God says to do something, you need to do it. You better be doing it. And so we took the tire in, and they fixed it in record time, got it fixed, and we got out of there. But you know what? While I was in the store, I was walking around in the store, and, and all of a sudden that despair came calling in my life and he said you'll never make it you're a you're a, a loser you'll never make it you'll you won't never make it to that place and that man is never going to be how is he going to believe what you say how's he going to believe that you're a man of god if you can't get there on time you know before i got out of there before just in a few minutes pastor steve i could have walked under these pews right here I was that low. But you know what? Two days before that, a preacher friend of mine called me, and he began to encourage me. He said, Brother Douglas, he said, Brother Douglas, he said, you guys are anointed. God is moving in your ministry. He's going to supply your needs. He'll do everything that you need because you guys allow the Spirit to move. I'm not talking about me. He was talking about us. And I was encouraged. God knew that that was about to happen and I was going to get down because the enemy was going to come calling. But see, he's always two days late, sometimes four days late. He's just always late. No matter what, God will prepare your way, hallelujah, if you'll let him. If you'll speak it, he will do it. If you will call, so I always pray, Lord, go before me and destroy my enemy that I may be able to walk through. Hallelujah. And I did that. And we got there, and we left. And I was so down and despondent. While we, just before we left, I was in Walmart, and I was walking around, and I was so down. I was, Lord, you know, we're not going to make that. It's, it's 3 o'clock by now, 2.33. we got a four-hour drive. We're not going to make it there. And you know what happened? As I was walking around, the Spirit of God spiritually grabbed me by the coat and he said, what are you doing? What are you doing? Don't you know that I'm able? Don't you know that I have the power to work this out for you? And boy, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I just began to throw my hands up and I began to worship. That's why worship is so important. Because it will put you in the presence of God. Hallelujah. And he began to minister to me. And as I walked out of that Walmart, hallelujah, I was happy because I was speaking in tongues in that Walmart walking around. Hallelujah. He was a resolutionist. He helps our infirmities. He helps our problems. If you're here tonight and you got a problem, he'll resolve it. We got out of there. Well, you know what? Through just different situations and everything that happened, we finally wound up over between 11 and 12. Pastor called and he said, you know what, I got some McDonald cards out there for you. He put some McDonald cards in the bushes. I mean, you know there's some great things sometimes in the bushes out there. Hallelujah. We got out there and we, I had uh, seven wall, uh, McDonald cards. Well, the Spirit said, I mean, the, uh, the devil, he came to me and said, no, no, no. Where are you going to find a Walmart? Where are you going to find a McDonald's? There was a McDonald's. Did you know that McDonald's was a 24-hour McDonald's? Praise God. I went in there, and I mean, I ate good on $10. You can, you can get a hamburger, you can get a fries, you can get a drink, and even coffee and pie on $10. Praise God. And that's what I did. I was flying high in the presence of the Lord. We walked out of that McDonald's, and we got in there. We were celebrating. You know, it was great for us. I mean, we, here we are, and it's midnight, and we need something to eat. We hadn't had anything since earlier. We ate earlier, but... Anyway, we got out of there, and when we pulled out of that place, we went down to the church, and we found a place on the side where the pastor told me to pull. He told me to pull like on this side here. There's a 30-amp plug out there, plug into it, and you'll be ready to, to go. He said, there's water out there. We got there and pulled that bus up out there, and it was about 12:30, 1 o'clock. I wouldn't call him. I wasn't going to call him at that time of the night. And here we are. We pulled in. We plugged the plug into it, Nothing. There was no electricity. Shh, hey, 
ain't going to say that. <laughs> we, plug, we plugged in that plug, and there was nothing, man. I mean, there was no power. <sighs> you know, But you know what? Even though that trouble was going on, I felt good in my spirit. I had already been witness to the power of God. Even though I knew, I knew where that was coming from. But you know what? I'd already been with God already. You know, sometimes we struggle and have hurts and pains and, and things are going on. But if you'll get a hold of God, you'll be able to make it through that situation. Hallelujah. And we got there. And you know what? That water spigot was one like I've never seen before. So we got the hose over and started working it. And I got, I got the needle nose. It's supposed to have a tool to turn that thing. I got the needle nose and began to turn it. And all of a sudden, the whole thing come off and began to soak me down right out there at 1 o'clock in the morning. My other Parker was there with me, and he, he was forcing it on, and I was trying to tighten it up, and we got it tightened up. Everything was all right. We're going to get water. I walked away. For some reason, I went to the other side of the bus, and guess what? Laurel and Hardy were out there. My two boys were out there doing the same exact thing we did. I did. They turned that water on and, psh, I mean, it was going, and I'm sitting over. <laughs> it looked like a fire uh, hydrant was out there just going all over the place. We shut that thing off, and I said, you know what? I'm going to find a regular water spigot. We ran around to the back of the church. I pulled around there, and, man, praise the Lord. We hooked up the water to the bus, had running water, hot because we had the propane and everything. But you know what? There was a GFI plug. How much you think a GFI is going to run a bus? It ain't going to run a bus, brother. I can tell you that. It ain't running no air. It ain't running nothing. We plugged into that thing. It just clicked. It just went off. We couldn't run any air. It was hot in Kansas City at that time. But I'd already been with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But you know what? I thought, well, I'll tell you what. I've got an idea. I've got a situation here. I'm going to turn that generator on. That generator run 220. We run air. We turned it on. Boy, it's cranked up. We started running the air. Man, it felt good. We could run the fans in the air. We got, my wife and I got laid down in the bed and was just talking for a minute. And about the time, you know how you just get that, you just get drawn away. You just begin to just fall away, you know, into the sleep. We heard that generator run. It's right under us. And all of a sudden, that thing. <laughs> out of gas. But I want to tell you right now, in the face of the enemy, if you've been with God, praise the Lord. And that resolutionist, you can face anything in your life. Hallelujah. Because he's holding your hand. Praise God. Do you know what? We went and plugged up and just run fans the rest of the night. And it was just enough to keep the sweat off of you. Just barely. Brother Doug knows what that's about because he knows them buses is hot. And that's the way it was. But you know what? When we got up the next morning, I was revived and ready to go. When we got into the service, we had 300 people in the altars that morning. Hallelujah. And is still hearing about God, what he did in that service. Because we have a helper. We have a wonderful helper. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to just embrace him and love him and just hold on to him and fellowship with him. Praise God. If you're not fellowshipping with the Spirit of God, you're missing out on the greatest thing in life. He will help you in your infirmities. He will help you with habits. He will help you with different situations in your life. He'll bring you to Christ first. Let you get washed in the blood if you ask for forgiveness and repent of your sins. And if you'll keep on, He'll fill your life. Hallelujah. He will fill you with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Praise God. As I close this little message here, praise God. We had an awesome time in that service that morning. Many, many people come. You can praise and worship team. Y'all come back if you would. Many people come.
Many people's lives were changed. And I was able to share, share bits and pieces of this, what I'm sharing. That we have a helper. If you'll reach out to him and get a hold of him, he'll help you in every situation. I've had Mondays that I didn't want to face. And I thought, my goodness, how am I going to make it? But you know what? I came to church and I worshiped God anyway in the face and in the midst of my problems. And when Monday got there, they were resolved. Hallelujah. He sets free from sin. He cancels the death penalty. He fulfills righteousness in our lives. He indwells believers. He gives life. He quickens the mortal body. He mortifies sinful members. He leads the children of God. He adopts into God's family. Hallelujah. He bears witness of sonship. He helps our infirmities. Praise God. He makes intercession for the saints. Praise the Lord. Jesus will rescue you and give you that helper. Praise God. Praise the Lord. If you're here tonight, you got a situation that seems like it will never be resolved. The resolver is here. He wants to touch your life.